Florida with Jim Defeaty. Good morning, I'm Jim Defeaty and welcome to Facing South Florida. For the last few years, the state has been dealing with toxic levels of blue-green algae that flow out of Lake Okeechobee. Last year, we did an entire documentary on how the polluted water flows out of Lake Okeechobee and is flushed east and west, dumping that putrid green sludge on both coasts. And in 2017, the legislature approved a plan to build a new reservoir south of the lake where the water could be sent and cleaned before being released into the Everglades and Florida Bay. The southern reservoir wouldn't solve all of the problems, but it was a start. A few months ago, the federal government passed funding for the southern reservoir, and President Trump signed it into law. Things seemed to be on track. And then this happened. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you very much. Moving on. That was the South Florida Water Management District voting to allow sugar giant Florida Crystals to continue their sugar operations on the very land needed for the reservoir. The eight-year lease has been negotiated in secret for months. And at 9 p.m., the night before the meeting, the district posted the lease on its website, announcing it would be voted on 12 hours later. Environmentalists who had been working for the Southern Reservoir for years were furious. My name is Daniel Andrews. I'm the uh, co-founder and executive director at Captains for Clean Water. I'm also not very happy right now based on what I'm, I'm seeing and hearing. You know, it, it's really a, a disgrace that there's even consideration about extending the lease when this, this item got added to the agenda. Last night at 9 o'clock, I had to find this on my cell phone and I'm sitting there laying in, in bed. Um, I don't think that's really the way that government in America should work where we're, we're squeaking things in at the last minute, not listening to the public. It's really, honestly, I feel like it's a disgrace. This is a public agency. You guys are required to act in the sunshine with proper notice. I think it's a real shame the way that this agency is operating. It seems like, honestly, and it's an attempt to, hold, to hide the ball. The Water Management District, all of whom were appointed by Governor Rick Scott, defended the no-bid secret deal with Florida Crystals, saying the district can get out of it in two years if the state and federal government actually goes ahead with the reservoir. But critics said the contract favored Florida Crystals and limits the options of the Water Management District has in dealing with the algae crisis. Things that jump off the page. First, the earliest, from what we could tell, the earliest possible time that the public could potentially have its land back is two years. That's best case scenario. Um, I have no idea if $1 million in revenue is in the public interest. Is that a competitive lease rate? I don't know. We haven't had a public discussion about it. The company can walk away from this lease apparently with no notice or with a one year's notice, but the district can't. So if the district is in a position, the people, if the people, if we are in a position to need this land for emergency operations, for example, we can't get it because the only reason we can cancel this lease or walk away from it is for the construction of the EAA reservoir. It's important to stress that this land is owned by the people. This is our land. We bought and paid for it. Now, the most amazing moment came when Congressman Brian Mast, who represents District 18, which includes Palm Beach, rushed down to the Water Management District meeting in Miami when he discovered that the district was about to vote on a lease he knew nothing about. I am also here directly on behalf of Governor-elect Ron DeSantis with the request that you postpone the vote on this agenda item. The Governor-elect, as well as federal legislators, would like to be briefed and be able to know that we are not putting in place additional hurdles to bringing this reservoir to fruition. <laughs> We want to know that any new land leases that are being incurred out there, that are being put forth out there, are not something that are going to be impossible to get out of. Some sort of land lease where we are going to be engaged in multi-year lawsuits if there's an early termination, some additional hurdles such as that. Despite his pleas to slow down, the district ignored him and went ahead and voted to approve the lease. In a few minutes, I will press one of those district members for answers. But first, a few days ago, I met with Congressman Mast and asked him about what he thought of the way the Water Management District had handled this and the new lease with Florida Crystals. 
So many things that the governor and the, the federal legislators like myself wanted to know about these lease agreements to make sure that they weren't going to get in the way of that reservoir. And we were denied that opportunity. And I think we were denied that, that opportunity with malice. Well, nobody's questions were answered by that board. Everybody's questions were ignored. And they said, no, we're going to go out there. We're going to go vote yes on these, even though people haven't had the opportunity to review them. The governor-elect has not had the opportunity to review them. The, the federal government has not had the opportunity to review them. And they basically said, uh, they could they couldn't give a, a rat's caboose what everybody else thinks and what does that tell you about the South Florida Water Management District I think it shows me a huge level of arrogance uh, on their part and uh, a huge level of, uh, of entitlement on their part and I think it shows that this is an entity that is not being responsive to the people when their own guidelines show that they're supposed to allow the people to review things like leases because it matters to so many individuals and they're not not allowing for that to occur they are do you believe that they are more beholden to agriculture and sugar interests than they are to the people? Yes. Well, if you believe that, then you must not want them to continue in the path that they're going or, or no, even I continue. Don't. But, but do you even want to see those members continue to remain on that board? I guess no. that's the question I want. Uh, there's, I mean, you could go look at video after video. I think there are a number of places where the, the members of the South Florida Water Management District Board uh, have proven that they're not taking into account the, the, the considerations of the people. Do you want them to step down? Yes, I want the, the members of the South Florida Water Management District. I think it would be appropriate that they step down. This was pushed through in the dark of night. That was not an above board. There are other places where I think the Water Management District is not being beholden to the people, being responsible to the residents of, of the state of Florida, all of the people on the coast. And, and in that light, I think that they have been derelict in their duties, and I think that they should be replaced. Six weeks ago, I got a friend request from someone calling themselves God. They started sending me people in need of help. I got a new friend suggestion. And? political fight. Remember, Governor-elect DeSantis has been a major critic of Big Sugar's power and influence. We will soon see if he will take on the lease and the Water Management District. Up next, we press a member of the South Florida Water Management District for answers when we come back. Our gift to you during the last call savings event at Ed Moore's Sawgrass Chevrolet.
Welcome back. As we covered in the first half of the show, the South Florida Water Management District conducted months of secret negotiations with sugar giant Florida Crystals to lease them 16,000 acres of land that the state needs to build a reservoir. That reservoir was designed to deal with the toxic algae problems. CBS 4 News requested an interview with the chair of the district, Miami attorney Federico Fernandez. Instead, the district provided Brandon Tucker, who was appointed to the district by Governor Scott in June 2017. Who approached who about negotiating a new lease? And I don't know who approached who. I would assume that that was, occurred during the Senate Bill 10 debate as to how that was to go down. And that was prior to my time, Jim. I came on this board in June of 2017. So probably what happened there with all that negotiations through Senate Bill 10 was just prior to my time. So, so, that, so that was the, the calling on you to renegotiate or negotiate a new lease was part of Senate Bill 10? Yes, sir. Can you show me where in Senate Bill 10 it says that? Because I can't find it. Uh, no, sir, not specifically. I mean, it's not in there. Okay. Well, my understanding is, is that agricultural operations were to continue, that they were not to be disturbed. And so I understand that from a practical standpoint, beyond even the law, that as a land manager, that's what I do for a living. I'm in the real estate business dealing with land primarily for 23 years. Uh, been a third generation Floridian from Okeechobee County where I grew up. And I live in Martin County now where we're at the uh, epicenter of these uh, blue green algae crisis issues. And you know, the, where, where that is located in here is one thing, but understanding the practicality of the fact that we need to be able to keep farming there, to keep operating there, uh, to make sure that we don't have this land go fallow, to make sure that we don't have invasive species move in and vegetation and all those things. Uh, those, that's, that was my primary focus, is to make sure that we did not do anything to violate the law, and that was to continue agricultural operations for the practical standpoint, Jim. Sure, again, but I go yeah. back, but you say you want to follow the law, and Absolutely. I'm with you following the law. Absolutely. I just don't know where in the law it says that you were required to provide a new lease. Yes, sir. I couldn't point that out to you at this point. Okay. I don't know specifically where that so is. There, so I know one of the things that was put up a lot during the, the, during the slide negotiation, is it this that you were relying on? Because I know that that was a major part. Absolutely, yes, sir. So, right. So mm -hmm. that... So that's not in Senate Bill 10. That Chapter 2018-1072, Laws of Florida. Right, but that's, that's not Senate Bill 10. Okay. That's part of something that was the enacting, implementing clause of the Appropriations Bill. Senate Bill 10 was passed in 2017. Mm -hmm. This was the enacting clause for funding in 2018. Mm -hmm. And that, I know, that, that was the major point for you, was, was what's outlined there, talking about not letting the land go foul yes, sir. and all those sorts of things. And you were impressed by that when that was put up on the screen. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Do you know what the immediate line after that was? So After this paragraph? Yeah. No, sir. The very next line, which for some reason your staff decided to leave off, is this section expires July 1, 2019. Was not aware of that. So essentially... You gave an eight-year lease, mm -hmm. citing a law that was only in effect for another eight months. Did you get played here? No, sir, not at all, because even if I would have known that prior to that, I understood a couple of things. One, the crucial timing element to this with me was for at least six months, our chief engineer, John Mitnick, had been giving us a NOAA weather report that we were going to potentially have an El Nino wet dry season. And I remember that in 2015 and 16, it was pre precursor to the 16 algae blooms, a very wet dry season. What was the good cause that prompted you to have to violate the seven day notice and move ahead with something after posting at 9 p.m. the night before? Now, is, is the seven day notice relative to sunshine law disclosure? Or what, what is this that seven is, day notice relative This is meetings to? and hearings. That, this is the administrative code that mm -hmm. South Florida Water Management District is, mm -hmm. is falling under. And it says, again, that you have to publish your agenda seven days in advance, mm -hmm. and that changes to that agenda can only be made for good cause, mm -hmm. and that good cause has to be stated. One of the speakers actually read this to you mm -hmm. at that meeting mm -hmm. on December 8th, and at no time did anybody state what the cause for changing the agenda. I mean, again, this was put mm -hmm. on, this lease mm -hmm. went from a discussion item to approval of a lease mm -hmm. at 9 p.m. before the meeting started. Mm -hmm. uh, don't you have a problem with that? 
No, sir, because I've served on other boards that are under Sunshine Law, so I understand the Sunshine Law. First Amendment Foundation told us Stuart News reached out to them in a week after our meeting and said we did not violate it, and I knew we didn't violate it. And I, if I would have even had the hint that we were violating Sunshine Law, I wouldn't have been a part of it. Um, I don't believe that there was anything going on that was nefarious or, or underhanded. Uh, the, the, actually, the question that Congressman Mass had asked all of us, and his big concern was, is... Uh, you know, is this going to delay the project? That was his concern. Is anything in there, we want to review it to make sure it's going to de that it's not going to delay the implementation of the AA Reservoir. If I would have in any way, shape, or form thought that anything that we were doing was going to be a delay, I would have absolutely agreed with him and said no. Well, Congressman Mass asked for, him for more than that. He, you know, he again found out about it after 9 p.m. Mm -hmm. He appeared before, before the, the group and asked that as a member of Congress who represents the district, who's fighting for the funding, that, that this be delayed at least for long enough for him to receive a proper briefing. He also said he was speaking on behalf of Governor-elect DeSantis, mm -hmm. and you ignored it. You ignored his request for a delay. Why? I did not see any reason why to delay. The Governor-elect was asking you to delay so that he could be brought up to speed. The member of Congress who's fighting for you, whose help you need in Congress, mm -hmm. is asking for a delay so that he can be properly briefed. Yes, sir. And I work with, he's my congressman in the 18th district. I live there and I work very closely with Congressman Mast. I have great respect for him. But I didn't want to do anything that was going to cause the delay that could have been caused. If it started raining two weeks afterwards with this NOAA weather forecast that we had, and I would have said, okay, let's delay it. Let's let Congressman Mast and, and Governor like DeSantis review this document. There was nothing in it that was going to be a delay. This was expediting the project. And I respectfully made the decision that we need to, in my understanding, we're in an environmental crisis. We've got to get these things moving quickly, and it was no disrespect to them, but everything that I knew at that moment in time, all the information I given by my staff, what I know from a practical standpoint, I truly believe that was the right decision to make. To Could, move forward. Uh, the lease is for a million dollars a year to be paid mm -hmm. right to the district. Yes, sir. Was, that, uh, was there any negotiation? Was there, did the district try to ask for more money? I'm, I'm not sure. Could the district have gotten more money from Florida Crystals? I was told it was done at market value. So other than that, you know, that was the question that I had asked. But how did you determine market value if you didn't put this out for competitive bidding? I would assume there'd be an appraisal done. Of, of what, the, what, the, what Florida Crystals was willing to pay you? Yeah, I guess what I'm saying is, market value. I'm saying yeah. when you are in a negotiation for land, this is what you do for a living. Yes, sir. You know, would you not be in a better position if you wondered, maybe U.S. Sugar wants to take over this land, maybe some other farming interest mm -hmm. in South Florida, you know, maybe Hundley Farms or one of those sure. other groups would be interested mm -hmm. in, in this 16,000 acres. They keep complaining that, you know, the number of available farmland is dwindling constantly. Mm -hmm. Maybe they would have been willing to pay the district more to continue to farm on it. You didn't explore any of that. Well, actually, I did ask that question of our staff before the meeting. And in my understanding, if you understand how the EAA works, it's about muck depth, and this land is not prime farming land from what I was told. So, it, you know, the best tenant's always the current tenant, and that's it, even in my own business. Keeping the person that knows the land, that's already there, that's already established, that's already have, you know, all their equipment staged, ready to go, they're the best tenant if they're a good tenant. And Florida Crystals is always shown to be a good tenant. The only reason you can cancel this, this can terminate this contract, is to build this reservoir. If some other option came available, for instance, water storage. I know you've been discounting the notion of storing water on this facility, mm -hmm. but if suddenly two years from now that becomes the best option, you're stuck for the next eight years. You cannot break this lease. Why, why pin yourself in in such a manner that gives you no options now for eight years? Well, once again, you know, I believe that this is the best option. And the people that have been talking about, well, we could have done some other alternative water storage in the interim. Or if things change and they said maybe dispersed water is the better solution. When we look at the last two months of our meetings that we've had at RAC and at our governing board meetings, where DEP and our agency brought to us where the loading, where's the phosphorus and the nitrogen coming from? And you know, Jim, in your documentary, you've done what's affecting Lake Okeechobee, where I grew up, and what's affecting our estuaries at Martin County, where I live, on the Clusahatchee, is phosphorus and nitrogen loading, where 97% of that water comes from the north end. Where I'm going with that, Jim, is, is that myself, as a governing board member, if I was presented an opportunity for an alternative, and I could come up with an additional $10 million, $15, $20 million, whatever that amount is, and knowing how good the water quality is south of the lake, and if I'm building a temporary structure, or even a permanent dispersed water structure on that 16,000 acres, the benefit that I would get by spending that money on the north end of Lake Okeechobee is going to have tremendous benefit to the liquid heart of the Everglades, which is Lake Okeechobee, it's going to have tremendous benefit to the northern estuaries where these algae beam crises occur. 
If I did it on the south end of the lake, it would have marginal to no benefit to Lake Okeechobee and those estuaries. So from my perspective, even if that was an alternative, I wouldn't support that because I'd want to spend that money on the north end of Lake Okeechobee. You're making the argument that this is the best approach to make to, to have this lease. Yes, sir. Why not actually allow the public to participate in that discussion? Again, I go back to the mm -hmm. idea of not having, not allowing Congressman Mass, yes, not allowing Governor-elect DeSantis, not electing others to sort of weigh in mm -hmm. and participate in that discussion. There really wasn't even debate. Mm -hmm. I mean, there were very few questions asked among the district members. The staff went up there, gave their presentation, left some things out of the presentation, but, you know, gave a presentation, and then you all voted in favor of it. If it was such a good plan, why not, why not just delay for a month even so that you could have then built consensus? All of these issues were heavily debated when Senate Bill 10 was being put forth. And so I knew all that debate had been done. When I was appointed by Governor Rick Scott to be put on this board, I met with him in May. Within probably days of Senate Bill 10 being signed, I was appointed about a month later. State Senator Joe Negron, who was my state senator, the Senate president at the time, who I've known for a long time. I made promises to Governor Rick Scott and Senator Joe Negron that when I was put on this board, that I would do everything in my power to make sure that the EA Reservoir was implemented as quickly as possible, to make sure that Senate Bill 10 was implemented without delay. I deal with this every day, Jim. I have kids on the St. Lucie River six days a week. My children, 15 and 13, row on the St. Lucie River. My parents have a home on the St. Lucie River. I go to church with people that live in that community. There's almost nowhere I can go and not avoid this issue. I take this issue very, very personally. It affects not only the environment, it affects people's businesses, it affects every, every part of my life it affects and it surrounds me. And I want the public to know that the reason that I made that decision and I believe the reason that our board made that decision was to uphold our promises to Governor Rick Scott, to uphold our promises to Governor-elect DeSantis who said he wants to continue with what Rick Scott has built upon, that he wants to see the EA Rail Reservoir built as soon as possible. And I'm gonna do everything in my power to make sure that's done as quickly as possible. And if I even hint or smell anything that could look like a delay, even if Congressman Mass, who I greatly respect, comes and asks for a delay, when I voted that way and, and said to him by voting that way, I don't see an issue with this lease. I believe it's the right thing to do. I believe it's the right thing to keep this project moving forward. That was my answer to him and to the public and before God in, in that moment. And so I spoke to Congressman Mass. Yes, I did an interview with him on Saturday. Um, he believes that you and the members of the South Florida Water Management District should now resign. Mm -hmm. What's your reaction to that? He's wrong. And I think as he and I build a relationship, it's one that we've just started in the last few months. Um, he and I have met in person several times. I've told him we may not always agree on how to get there, um, but I can assure you I'm a volunteer. I don't get paid to do this, uh, but the reason I love doing it is, is because I grew up on the north end of Lake Okeechobee. I grew up three miles from the Kissimmee River with the, one of the biggest environmental disasters when they channelized that river, did the damage that it did that we're all trying to fix today. I take it incredibly personally. I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that we get this right. I asked him specifically what he thought about the fact that you went ahead mm -hmm. and voted the way that you did, not yes, you sir. personally, the members of the district. Mm -hmm. He says, I think it shows to me a huge level of arrogance on their part and a huge level of entitlement. And that's when he went on to talk about that, that right? yes, he mm -hmm. said that I think it shows a huge level of arrogance on their part, the South Florida Water Management District, and a huge level of entitlement on their part. And I think it shows this is an entity that is not being responsive to the people. The law, Senate Bill 10, which is what guides us here, is a guardrail. And as we're going down this road, I wanna make sure that I'm not bumping into the guardrail. If the guardrail is removed and Senate Bill 10 is unraveled somehow and we drive off in a ditch and we lose our way and we don't get to the finish line, I wanna make sure that we're able to cross the finish line, that we're fulfilling the law, I'm laser focused on getting that done with all the distractions that are out there. I don't see that as being arrogant. I don't, I, I, Jim, I'm not a politician. I'm not worried about that someone's not gonna vote for me. I'm not worried about, because no matter what I do, someone's gonna get upset. I knew that when I took this position. I don't get paid to do it. To resign, my life was good before this. It'll be good after it. But I really believe in what I'm doing here. And I believe I'm doing it for the people and I'm doing it for all the right reasons to get our environment right, to get this right. We have one shot at this. And this is the biggest issue. I told Governor Scott this when I was appointed. This is the biggest issue of our time. Water quality and water quantity in South Florida, if we get this wrong, we're done. It's gonna be an economic disaster and an environmental disaster. So I take that incredibly personally. I don't in any way see that as being arrogant uh, at all. I don't see it as an entitlement at all. I see that as the pressure of knowing the facts that I knew at that time. I knew that when I made that decision, I was gonna take heat for it. I'd have been a fool not to think otherwise. 
But I believed and knew when I was at peace, and I'm still at peace today, that that was the right thing to do for the people of South Florida. It was the right thing to do for the people that live on the St. Lucie and the Calusi Estuary and on Lake Okeechobee. I believe that with all my heart. And if Governor-elect DeSantis calls on you and the other members to step down and resign, will you? I would respectfully ask that he let me continue my two and a half years left on this board. And I think once he sits down with me and he hears my heart and he hears my sincerity that I want to do what's right for the people, I want to work with him to see this reservoir built. I want to work with him to get the Herbert Hoover Dyke finished. I want to work with him to save Lake Okeechobee and get nutrient loading on the north end reduced. I think once he and I, and I look forward to that conversation because I've not ever met uh, Governor Lake DeSantis. I look forward to that conversation. I think once he and I sit down one on one and we meet, I think that he would uh, think twice about asking for my resignation. We will be sure to stay on top of this story. We'll be right back. Trust me, we know mornings can be hectic. You're getting South Florida. I'm Jim DeFeedy. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Looking for a medic.